Ever since Dante's Inferno, men have been fascinated by versions of purgatory, and specifically by that colorful chap who runs it, Satan, Lucifer, or whatever you want to call him. There have been many versions of the devil, yet he's always looked about the same. But time marches on, progress brings change, and there's no reason to believe that Mr. Lucifer has not progressed with the times. Perhaps even moved out of the sweatshop conditions he operated in for so long, to cleaner, air-conditioned headquarters, like a modern building on, let's say, Madison Avenue. Tonight's story is an allegory of what else? Good and evil. The good is represented by this lovely couple in Coldport, Connecticut. Jenny and Tom Logan. The evil is represented by that chap coming in, Mr. Lucifer himself. Doesn't look very evil, does he? <laughs> Wait. It's just a disguise, of which he has many. How many times have I told you not to appear in that ridiculous costume? You look like an old Schubert musical comedy. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Lucifer. It's just that I get so homesick for the good old days. After all, I was a legitimate moon goddess. Iris, if you don't like it here, you can always go back to the brimstone division. No smoking, no coffee break. No, 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 please. Please, please, Mr. Lucifer, don't do anything rash. And no mirror in the ladies' room. No, I'll conform. I promise I'll try. Then get out of here and put on something sensible. And tell the senior vice presidents I'm at a top-level conference in my office at once. Yes, sir. This is a blue sheet memo for the entire organization. Paragraph. It has come to my attention that some of the junior fiends have been accepting Christmas gifts. This is totally opposed to our policy. All such gifts must be handed into the mail department for return by the 15th of the month. Paragraph. Research on the seven deadly sins has revealed that... Excuse me, sir. Mr. Beelzebub, Mr. Belial, Mr. Malik, and Mr. Mathers. Hi, Chief. Good to see you again, sir. Chief, my research group has come up with a gimmick on fallout shelters. We test marketed it in Waukegan, and I sort of thought if we could run it up the flagpole and see what makes it... Well, I... I was just thinking out loud, Chief. Mammon. Since when has the payroll department been backing Broadway shows? Well, lots of business around there, Chief. You know, crazy actors, producers going broke, trouble with the unions. And there's this little girl you know. And there's this little girl I know. No more backing shows, Mammon. We are not angels. Yeah, boss. We've got this new subliminal approach to sin we tried in the L.A. area. It's the greatest thing since Beelzebub invented flies. I invented flies? Chief, I swear I never took credit for the fly bit. Mosquitoes, yes, but not flies. Quiet. Something bugging you, Chief? 
I'll tell you what's bugging me. A certain individual by the name of Thomas Francis Logan. Who he? The most dangerous man of the year. Doesn't ring a bell. Beelzebub, you haven't pulled your weight in this organization since the time you didn't invent flies. Now, Chief, I said I... Pay attention, all of you. There he is, Thomas Francis Logan. This is the most dangerous man of the year? Yes, gentlemen. That's the man we've got to get in this fiscal period or go out of business. Watch carefully, gentlemen. Oh, well, yes, right. sir, you will do with you. Thomas Francis Logan, Orchard Road, Coalport, Connecticut. Age 30, architect in the firm of Roylott, Grimsby, and Poker. Married to Genevieve Foster Logan. This, this Boy Scout loves his wife, loves his work, loves his neighbors. He drinks and smokes in moderation. He works late hours at no extra pay. He's sincere, also trustworthy, helpful, loyal, friendly, courteous, kind. Stop it, Chief. You're making us sick. He came to my attention a month ago when his car broke down and he walked four miles through a storm to vote. The pink. Then I checked and I discovered he doesn't cheat on his income tax, his expense account, or his wife. He's a volunteer fireman. He's a little league umpire. He's a big brother. He's... He's a rat fink. He's dangerous. Without realizing it, he sets the pattern for his whole community. People admire and imitate him. How would you like this plague to spread? Picture an entire country of Logans. Oh! He must be tempted, corrupted, and destroyed. Listen, Chief. Corruption-wise, I've got a brainstorm. We could... I don't need any coaching from you, Beelzebub. I know how to sell. Now then, this Logan is a typical, wholesome American boy. He has all the virtues because he's never really been tried. Well, this is going to be one of those days when everything goes wrong. A solid buildup of exasperation, and he'll be a natural for temptation and the fall. I'm so sorry. I beg your pardon. Did oh, I do oh, that? Oh, that's all right. Oh, Thank heaven it wasn't me. Terribly mm -hmm. clumsy of me. Oh, here, let me. Uh, may I? May oh no, I... no, no! Don't bother, please. It, it's best to use a gum eraser. Oh, oh! I, I, are you an artist? Uh, no, an architect. Oh, I see. Oh, you've missed a spot. Over oh no, here. no, no, no! That's that's part of the design. Oh, I see. Uh, what is it? It's a shopping center for a Texas client. Oh, magnificent! Mag. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there it goes again. My my sinus. Smog, you know, every time I come to the city, it's the same old story. Gasoline, smoke, humidity. I, I wonder if, if you'd be kind enough to, uh, to hold my nose drops. There's no, no thank certainly. You. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, what have I done now? Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Did I do that? My, how clumsy. I had no idea my medicine was that strong. Isn't that a terrible thing? I've ruined your holders. I, I, I am so. Oh, may I offer you a cigarette? I mean, I owe you something after all the inconvenience I've caused you. It's, uh, it's really terrible of me. I, I really, uh, uh, I have a lighter here someplace. My wife gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> Butane, you know, it's the latest thing. They're really quite extraordinary. They're, oh, my, I'm so sorry, sir. I'm terribly sorry. That was very stupid of me, wasn't it? I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm awfully sorry, sir. <laughs> Jenny? Hello. Hello. What number is this, please? Uh, this number is uh, called a port. Una, una, due, due, one, one, two, two. Well, that's the right number. Who's this? Uh, uh, the Stein, you know, I'm a plumber here. Uh, well, tell Mrs. Logan her husband wants to talk to her. 